All right, welcome back everyone to the FNTV studio here at MWC Barcelona. My name is Alejandro Pinero, I'm your host, and my commitment to keeping my glasses on until the wind stops howling remains. Well, I'm very excited to be with Lorenzo Casaccia from Qualcomm to talk about standards. Lorenzo, thank you so much for dropping by today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, Lorenzo, before we start talking about the future, let's talk about where we are now and how that's driving the innovation towards 6G. Does 5G, 5G Advance, are those the building blocks for 6G? How do you look at it? Yeah, absolutely. 5G, 5G Advanced are building blocks for 6G. Uh, way to look at it is to start from where all of these technologies are being developed. There is a standard organization called 3GPP, uh, which of course is very important for Qualcomm. Qualcomm sends maybe 100 delegates to 3GPP. It's huge. And uh, it's the organization that is responsible for producing 3G, 4G, 5G, and then 6G standards. It operates with uh, releases, very much like uh, releases of operating systems in your phone. And every year and a half, there's a new release. So there is a process of continuous improvement. And now we are around the so-called uh, release 19, if you can believe that, and going into release 20. And uh, that's 5G advanced. And 5G advanced uh, covers a variety of uh, evolution tracks for 5G, including topics like using artificial intelligence for improving the wireless system, or using artificial intelligence in the radio access management, or uh, going into very low power, uh, low impact, small devices, so-called ambient IoT. So things very much at different ends of the spectrum, and many other uh, improvements along those dimensions. And all of these will be building blocks uh, in, uh, towards 6G. So uh, it's not like uh, there is 5G and then people go on holidays and then come back for 6G, but it's really a process of, uh, of continuous improvement and learning and feedback loops that brings you from 5G to 6G. Absolutely. Although if we could figure that out, then that'd be great for you, right? You come back every few years. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> Lorenzo, Absolutely. let me ask you about what use cases do you see will drive that 6G? Um, adoption and, and perhaps before we even get to adoption, are we building standards with those in mind? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think this, in standards there is a luxury to try to address a large number of use cases, of course, based on feedback from participating companies. Uh, and then the market will decide if, when, and with which modality, which use cases will, uh, will take on. Actually, it's a good moment to also mention in, uh, in FreeGBP, there's over 500 companies that are members. So it's really an enormous organization. Uh, of course, there are companies that have a massive commitment like Qualcomm, but then there are companies from all sectors and even this distribution of memberships which from all over the world is a good testament of the diversity of use cases. So what we have for 6G is two families of, uh, of use cases. One. It's more traditional mobile communication, which is mobile broadband, a lot of speed and feeds and uh, ability to do more and more computing on mobile devices. It can be your phones, it can be laptops, or it can be devices adhesions to the phone, or even using the 6G network as a so-called fixed wireless access. So in, in lieu of uh, cable or DSL or things like that, so just give internet access. But then there is a second family of use cases, which indeed has started from 5G and will continue to 6G, which is using the same technology of the cellular networks to go into different use cases. So satellite communications incorporating cellular systems or media broadcasting, very much like uh, media production of, uh, of this studio, or IoT or automotive or uh, public safety, first responders, critical communications, all of these are ancient industries that uh, will also drive 6G. Yeah. Brilliant, Lorenzo. We're just about out of time, but before we finish, I did want to ask you about what you were talking about there about the community. You mentioned Qualcomm has 100 delegates to 3GPP, over 500 companies involved in building these standards. Why does that matter? Well, it's a, thank you for the question. It's a very interesting question, very close to my heart. Standardization, especially this type of standardization, is a mix of collaboration and competition. It's very much a marketplace of ideas, uh, everybody can come to 3GPP, membership is very easy, all the documents are on the internet, meetings are very open, and the best idea is selected. So really, it's, uh, uh, it's somewhat competitive, of course, among companies for the best ideas. But at the same time, 
all of the participating companies share the same interest in evolving technology. So there is also a sense of collaboration, of shared purpose, of shared mission. And because of this, uh, there's also a third aspect. Delegates typically are committed to standards for many years in a row. It's really a core part of their careers in many cases. And they establish a human relationship even with uh, the delegates of competing companies. Mm -hmm. And that is a human touch of standardization that personally I'm very fond of and gives a special flavor to all of the sand on our ecosystem. Excellent. Well, Lorenzo, thank you again for dropping by Fierce Network TV here in Barcelona. And we look forward to continuing to hear about all the great work with Sanders. Well, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun.